From the top of the CBS Interactive Building in San Francisco, California, it's the Apple Bite Extra Crunchy with your host, Brian Tong. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Round of applause. We're back. We're back. Beecham. Stephen Beecham in the house. What's up, y'all? BTZ up in here. We're back from CES. We're back from our Christmas break. We're back from the holiday break. It's been, what, about three weeks? Yeah. I heard I heard y'all are thirsty. <laughs> y'all are thirsty <laughs> for some Apple Bite Extra Crunchy. That's what we're here for. We wanted to let you guys know again, be a part of the show. While we while we do this show, we're actually streaming live on YouTube or streaming live on live stream. We're periscoping with you all. I see all you periscopers out there, over 200 strong right now, just kicking it with us. We also want to let you guys know that you can be a part of our show. 1-800-616-2638. Is that the correct number? That is that the, is correct, the number. correct number. I, I, I get mixed up with my numbers. I that know. is the number to leave your voicemail. If you guys have any thoughts, questions, things you want us to talk about, things that you want to talk about, Tell us your name, where you're from, get right to it, and we'll include you in the show. It's all, it's all love, right? It's all love. It's all love. So we're going to play a little bit of catch-up, but we're also going to keep you up to date on what's happening right here, right now. So this is kind of, let's get things up to speed. The good thing about it is by the end of the year and the beginning of the year, not much really happens. Yes. You know, no, nothing Nothing Apple, no big Apple no, news in no. the last month or so. They're, they're all on vacation. They're hibernating. They're developing different things and one of those things that they might be developing is really what we talked about in our rumor show from last last episode about the whole idea will apple get rid of the the uh, headphone jack port well according to nine to five mac and this is one that is we could talk about this forever apple is developing a revamped cord free beats like headphones these are in-ear like headphones with a charging case ahead of iphone 7 but these are wireless Yes. Like earphones. So we were both we were both pretty wrong. We thought they were going to be lightning cable. <laughs> well, I think <laughs> they're, they're w- wrong. I actually I don't think we're wrong. Actually, well, the the lightning cable will charge the headphones. I actually yes, and and I think they're going to actually include regular headphones. Okay. I think there's going to be a lightning adapter. Okay. So therefore, you and I will still be right. But these wireless ear pod phones, uh, we have like a clip for people that are watching. If you're familiar with the Motorola Hint. There's also a pair of headphones that were showcased at CES called the Bragi Dash. Which these, I want. Of which we all want. I want. These are like, uh, if you've seen the movie Her, right? Yes. With, the, with, the, with Joaquin Phoenix and uh, Scarlett Johansson. Think of that type of a headphone or earbud inside your ear. Uh, Apple's believed to be developing this. In addition, they're talking about a wireless charging case. So you wouldn't have to like... There's no way to really plug these little ear pods. They go into their own case, yeah. and then the case itself has a battery that charges them, and then you can also plug in that case to what you're kind of talking about, like a lightning adapter. Yeah, maybe you can even use your phone to charge your You could, your you could potentially do that as well. Possibly. But the the report from 9 to 5 Mac is that these would be a premium headset in addition to the phone. They wouldn't come bundled with it. Uh. They're saying they might be somewhere around a $200, $300 price point. Oh my gosh, that's pretty yeah. hefty, man. It is, but that's if you want to, if you want to be in the you future, want the her experience. Yeah, if you want the future, right? The, the it might be worth it. I don't know. It reports might be. will be there's some sort of swiping on it where it'll also integrate some Siri functionality. So that's that, cool. So that that that's is cool. cool. Uh, I wouldn't be. I would still have to use these regular standard headphones that we're using on the show. Yeah, but this is where Apple is thinking. Another thing to kind of lead you down this road of where are the breadcrumbs. Apple registered the AirPods trademark about three months ago. AirPods. AirPods. So that's probably the name of them. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool, man. I, I, I'm actually very – I am excited about this. I, I want to go wireless. I mean, I, how many times have you yanked your headphone out of your ear or hurt yourself or just broke your headphones? You know, it's like this This will be a game changer for sure. I think if you look at the majority of users are probably – in a, you know, just upset of the idea of getting rid of the three and a half millimeter headphone jack. Yeah. I like the idea of just having it because ultimately I actually don't even think at the end of the day, just leave it in there and make the phone thicker. So it has more battery life. Mm -hmm. That that's, that's where I'm coming from because I think the current iPhone is more than thin enough. I kind of wish they brought back the uh, iPhone four design that had that that strong metal edge. It was like, a, it was one of the sturdiest oh, yeah. iPhones. It yeah. was like, I thought it was the coolest iPhone design. Yeah, it was nice. It was I, minimalist. I do, I do miss it too. Yeah, I it had the antenna it. gate issues, right? That was the phone that had antenna gate issues. Yes. But I, after they resolved that, I thought it was the best designed 
iPhone that I can remember. And then the iPhone 5 kind of was similar. And, it, you know, it was a tiny bit bigger. It was kind of similar. But uh, I, I recently was forced to finally upgrade. I have an wait, iPhone. Wait, 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 wait. Newsflash? Forced. Why forced? What happened? <laughs> because January 8th was the last day that <laughs> AT&T was uh, going to let people do two-year contract. Yeah. Right? So subsidized phone. So I went. I had to buy the phone. Otherwise, it was going to cost me like eight hundred dollars. So I, I got it for two ninety nine, and I got the two year contract with AT and T, which, which I've had since the iPhone one. Yeah. With unlimited data and everything I want, right? Which phone so, did you end up actually buying? Like a six? I got the S iPhone six S. Six S. That's so, nice. Do you like it? I do. You're I like mean, it. What were you on before? Like a four? I was on a five. Yeah. So you're you like know, in the future now. It's taking some adjustment because it's a little bigger. <laughs> That's now, what she said. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh! But uh, now I'm seeing this like wireless. I, they better have this wireless headphone option, you know, for the iPhone success. Because it's looking like it might just be for the seven, which would be a problem. Well, if they do connect through Bluetooth, which the Motorola Hint does, which the Bragadash does, which uh, another headphone called the Kanoas do, uh, they should. They it should. It should be good to go. My biggest concern about these in ear buds or ear pods, I actually wanted them to call them air buds hmm. because I wanted them to do this like cooperative like a golden campaign. Re- yeah, a golden yeah. Retriever yeah, yeah. Like, like wearing, a- wearing like air pod, air, <laughs> ear buds, air buds. Three. Yeah, making, yeah, sh- sh- soccer, football, <laughs> lacrosse, tennis, yeah. all those sports. Um, but I'm cur- I'm more concerned about how they'll fit in my ear because once you get to earbud status, yeah. it's all about the fit. It is. And these are all going to be designed probably differently. Apple's overall earbuds. I will say that the their latest. I have the older ones on right now, but their latest earbuds are. What are they calling them? Earpods. I think they are calling them earpods. I don't know. Their latest earpods probably fit the best, and I do like their sound because they're more bassy than past ones. They sound so much better, right? It's, they're the best sounding ones day. for sure, Big right? Time, yeah, right for sure. I'm wearing the old ones. I can even tell right now. I know it's like it's it's, it's, it's so a lot ridiculous. more tinny and less. You know, it's just <laughs> this is unacceptable. It is unacceptable. This is unacceptable. You're like I've been like when I first heard the new ear- earphones, I was like, I've been listening to the other crappy ones for the, <laughs> this many years. Oh my gosh! Seriously, but, I can't go back. <laughs> no, I can't. I can't. So uh, that's what's happening around the world of the potential Apple earpods, the Lightning port. Um, or sorry, the lightning type cable adapter. It does appear though that the iPhone 7, according to more reports in the supply chain, would lead us to believe that in fact the iPhone 7 is the model where it looks like they're getting rid of the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Yes, all the all the chatter online is all the chatter online. All 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 my friends in China are talking like that. <laughs> um, every rumor site. So just buckle up. It, it's it's going to happen. And there, cool. to me, there would be no reason for them to save it for an iPhone 7S. It's a brand new model, brand new form factor. It should happen on the 7. Yeah. I so, agree. Um, so we'll wait to see how that all comes together. But it's just kind of fun to talk about it. Earpods, to, would you – okay, how about this? Before we go on, uh, would you pay what – would, what would you pay? 200 Is yeah, that the top, top Two, price? 200 I would easily probably go out and buy wireless headphones. The EarPod ones. The EarPods, yeah. It's got to be to me between 149 and 200. I wonder what people people that are watching uh, live. I'm curious what they're gonna say, but I'm gonna say 149, 200 tops. I think Apple, because of their premium, will probably say 200. Yeah. But if they go higher than that, like 249, I'm like, come on. Guys. If people will get angry. Come on. I mean, but it's not the first time we've all been angry over a price of come an on. Apple product. <laughs> You're like, ah, it's so expensive. Well, yeah, and we'll we'll get to more of that in a little bit. Uh, just also to keep you updated, what's going around. With Apple's TV service, still no major traction. Uh, But recently, ESPN's president says Apple has been frustrated over building their own TV service, uh, but he does expect new packages in 2016. That's ESPN's John Skipper. Uh, He was recently interviewed in the Wall Street Journal, and he was talking about, you know, the question was asked to him, does Apple have a path to being a player in the TV industry? Skipper says they're creating a significantly advantageous operating system and a great television experience, and that experience is fabulous for sports. They're big proponents of believing it would be a fabulous place to sell some subscriptions. Um, But he says that Apple has been frustrated by their ability to construct something which works for them with programmers. So this is when we talk about that number, right? What Apple wants to pay these content providers, what these content providers are willing to pay without cannibalizing their current cable base and their current digital subscriptions Apple is trying to figure it out, and ESPN also says they're trying to work with them. 
So everybody, both sides want in. It's just a matter of will Apple give them the number that they want? And right now that answer is no. Doesn't uh, look like it. He also talked about just to kind of give you guys and I guys and gals an idea of where digital subscriptions are at. Sling TV, which has included ESPN with their service, he says that uh, the numbers are significant and they're really happy about them. Another tidbit also showed that if digital subscriptions from Sling TV's service, which is twenty dollars a month, uh, cannibalizes their overall revenue compared to uh, dig- TV cable subscriptions, they have the ability to opt out of that deal. Oh, yeah. So it was kind of built in like, well, just in case, what Skipper has told them, though, is up to this point, it appears that more new people are actually getting the digital service, subscription service, Mm -hmm. not cable people jumping over yet. That's going to change. So it's people who haven't had cable in the past. Or maybe do, and maybe you need something remote, Mm. but it hasn't cannibalized their current uh, actual cable subscriptions yet. that's interesting. So, you know, it's it's very early on, though, for this whole thing to figure itself out. But again... uh, Apple TV service, I still expect to see it in 2016. Otherwise, that is arguably one of their larger fails that and, we've seen in a long time. And sports is like the most key thing you have. And to I get. can't watch sports. <laughs> the thing is, I can't watch sports on streaming. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. hard well, to watch. You still have to have a cable subscription. You and can't. It, you know, it looks uh, different. It, it There's does, lag. Yeah. There's sometimes it breaks down. You're like, yeah. I can't do this. <laughs> and then what if you're like messing around with Twitter while <laughs> you're watching? You're gonna be. You're like. 30 seconds behind. <laughs> totally. Right? Yes. People are going to be like, head. people are going to be like, Steph Curry splash, emoji, 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 splash, splash, splash. And, and you're like, you huh? That, you don't want to be that guy. <laughs> don't be that guy. Also, um, this is kind of cool. Apple today uh, announced some new music applications. Apple launches their music memos app and also a major update for GarageBand iOS. This is a uh, GarageBand here where they've added uh, new features to their loops and all smarter loops, and then they've also added the kind of this new drum kit feature, but I think the standout or the cool one on the go is going to be this Music Memos app that you can use on your iPhone. Which is awesome. iOS device, right? So um, do you want to kind of talk about a little bit about it, Beecham? Yeah, so it's just, you know, you can leave a voice memo on your phone. This this allows you to leave guitar memos. You can play like a little riff into your phone and records it. It will find out what chord that you played, what uh, BPM you played. It will add drums. It will add bass to your to your piece of music that you, whatever you wrote, just you know, to give you like a real quick demo. Then you can export it. It's really amazing. I mean, I wish I had this when I was 13 <laughs> in my bedroom. I'm telling you, the you know, tools that the tools that young people have today is just it's I'm staggering. Just, we were we were we Stephen and I, you know, not to date ourselves, but we are before YouTube really became YouTube. Oh yeah, I remember when YouTube was what it was late 90s yeah we were like graduating high school two guys from berkeley put up basically a server in their college dorm to start up youtube yeah like that is what it is it is it and so now when you think about like i was you know i i was in school i I was i had a digital video camera that was like it was my gift it was yeah it was like about this big right (laughs) like this big I you could hold it over your shoulder. I paid like twelve hundred bucks for it, but I was a oh, video man. junkie. Right now, it's our phone. Like our phone it takes better pictures than our DSLR you can upload. Camera. <laughs> People sometimes forget how amazing the stuff around us is. Like you can upload video footage and edit it instantly from your phone. Well, now you okay? can just how amazing record an album on a bus and like yeah. produce it and put it on iTunes. <laughs> or the guy <laughs> that recorded an album in the Apple Store. Yes. Yeah. Remember that? Yeah, for free. Just, just using sneaking the... into the Apple Store, which is a genius idea. Yeah. So, so these you know, are cool. we're periscoping live. We're street all, all this stuff from our phone. I yeah. mean, this is this is amazing. So this music memos app, I mean, just from like an idea standpoint of being able to just throw down some stuff. They, they said you could use other instruments. You can also yeah. use your voice and it would, you know, pick up the beat and create kind of a generic general, you know, dr- in time. Yeah. Well, like GarageBand, I was always like an elitist over GarageBand because I use Pro Tools HD. Of course, like, you're, you're, you're pro because yeah. you're pro. Be like, GarageBand is silly. But then people start bringing me like pretty sick demos on GarageBand. I'm like, how'd you make this? And like GarageBand, I'm like, whoa, okay. But now, you know, it's like really grown into something amazing for kids to use. So I'm a big fan of it now. Yep. So uh, check them out. There are at least music memos. The app is free on iOS devices. The GarageBand update 
basically comes with your iOS device or it's $4.99 uh, to update that. But again, cool stuff from Apple. I you got to watch the Dan Ackerman demos. Yeah, you got to watch the demos. That's actually pretty cool. He's nailing them. <laughs> he's, he's, <laughs> he's playing some guitar it. riffs. He is killing it. And then oh. just another little update of where Apple is at. This is a uh, this is actually pretty surprising. In just six months, Apple now has over 10 million subscribers. Subscribers. So these are paid people to their Apple Music service. This is across iOS, Mac, PC, and Android because it is on Android and Apple TV. This same milestone took Spotify, and these are different times, six years to accomplish. This is according oh to the Financial gosh. Times. Wow. So that Apple, is very impressive. I, mean, I did not think that many people would stick around for Apple Music, quite honestly. I, yeah, I'm, I'm actually pretty pretty surprised. But then thinking about it, you know, everyone's already... It's a numbers game. They have their phones, and they're on <laughs> iTunes, so it's just so easy. It's got to be depressing if you're an upstart company to know that just because Apple has this huge user base this marketing muscle they are the big machine yeah they they basically take what people have done right they're not really the i will say it over and over apple was not the most innovative company in 2015 at all no but they're a business machine yeah and uh they they did they did they did right with this whole apple music service one side note that i forgot to throw in here and correct me if i'm wrong but uh I don't know if you heard about this, but Apple is, uh, because they're changing their iAds platform, they are removing the whole free, ad-free Apple radio uh, feature where you can, you know, look by artists and it just plays. So they're they're getting rid of that by, at the end of this month. Oh, really? Completely getting rid so of it. So was that always just like a... Um, it was just, just a... a- just a temporary thing that they were going to get rid of or they never, they never said they were going to get rid of it. This is like, <laughs> this is like bad Apple territory. Okay. It so is. they, they've always, ha- I don't know how many of you actually use it. I use it all the time, right? We're not talking about beats one. We're talking about Apple's radio stations yes. that are, free, which are awesome, which are awesome. You just put in a genre and then Thank just you. play for a long time. The, you will not be able to do that after January 28th. That is a bummer, man. So from now on moving forward, the only way you can get any type of streaming radio from Apple uh-huh. is by subscribing to Apple uh, Music. Uh-huh. In addition to that, it's only going to now be their cure, curated kind of stations, customized so setup, and produced by Beats DJs One, and yeah, stuff instead and of algorithm. From what I from what I can tell, hmm. but ultimately free radio squashed as of January twenty eighth. That's sad. That's a that that's a huge bad apple. <laughs> that is a bad apple. Speed John Periscope. That's a huge bad apple. I see you. So um yeah, it's, sorry to just completely take the air out of the room. Well, I wonder if that was like their magic number. Like when we get to ten million, we're gonna kill all they, these other features. They, you know who knows, right? They Could be. they're saying we're changing our ads platform, dude. They're sitting on two hundred billion plus dollars. Wow. You think they give a squirrel a little nut? No, no, they gotta <laughs> do that. They're not gonna do that. All right, um, we talked about how much you would pay for, you know, earbuds, but I have a more important question. How much might you pay for your iPhone if it was made in the US? Okay, now we're not gonna get into politics here because that's not what we do, but we're going to mention that Donald Trump recently announced how he wanted to make America great, and part of that is bringing more jobs back to America. So he said, right, we're going to, this is his quote, we're going to get Apple to build their damn computers and things in this country instead of in other countries. You're fired. You're fired. But did he say damn? No. He did say damn. No, he said he said they're damn. Yeah. He said they're damn computers and things in this country instead of in other countries. Okay? So that's what, one of his rhetoric. He also said that he would levy you know, um, high tariffs on products that were built outside of the U.S. and brought in. Oh. So... We did like a little breakdown on CNET. This is courtesy of Roger Chang about roughly, okay, what what does it cost based on just manual labor to build an iPhone, okay? So right now, a Foxconn employee, a Chinese Foxconn employee gets paid roughly $400 a month before overtime. This is, first of all, according to the New York Times, okay? So that's $400. Roughly right now, it's $400 a month for a manufacturer in Foxconn. That's $100 a week. Yeah, that's that's yeah. pretty slim. Now these are different countries and different you know yes. locations. Now let's take this uh, manufacturing. Let's pretend we take manufacturing into Wyoming or Georgia. 
which happens to have the lowest minimum wage at $5.15 an hour, okay? That's if you're paying minimum wage. Yeah. Working eight hours a day, five days a week, a U.S. worker would make $824 a month. That's about double the cost of a Chinese worker, mm -hmm. okay? Now, let's say we were going to have them build them, like make them, manufacture them in California. $9 an hour, the monthly payout, roughly $1,400 a month. That's more than triple the Foxconn worker. So let's just say from a minimalist standpoint, if you're talking about we're building and manufacturing these in Wyoming or Georgia in those locations, it's minimum before marketing, before distribution, before shipping, blah, blah, blah. It's minimum going to double the price of an iPhone. Right now, an iPhone success is around $650. Would you be willing to pay $1,300 for your iPhone? Tough question. <laughs> 13 for your – that is actually a tough question. It's very tough because morally, you know, morally you want to say yes. I want to do it. Morally you want to say America. We want America. We America. want things made here. But People on Periscope are like, for it. no, 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 hell no, no, hell no, no, no. Minimum wage. They're like, minimum wage, 15 an hour. I. So, you know – Again, we're not talking politics, but if there's one way to turn off voters is to threaten them yeah. and tell them that your iPhone might end up costing more than double if you elect me. <laughs> <laughs> Probably should have stayed away from the iPhone issue. That that is that is very polarizing. Yeah, but I mean, on the bright side, there's gonna be a bunch of jobs here in America. That's that's so that's, that's the flip side, right? That's, I mean, that's what his message is. You know, exactly. We're gonna get people to build stuff here again. See, because we don't build anything in America. We, don't. we make apps. Which is great, you know that's cool, but uh, we don't really. Yeah, I mean, we build cars, but you know, we don't build a lot of stuff like we used to. Well, the 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 gap between the upper class and lower class, the the middle class is shrinking significantly. Yeah, that's been well documented. Yeah, something has to change, right? The the gap here in our country is huge. So, um, it's who knows. I'm for if, and against it. How, yeah, right, right, right. Is right, that right, possible? Right. No, it is possible. I'm for and against it. <laughs> hey, Stephen, life isn't black and white. It, it's gray, I man. Know. It's uh, gray. Uh. It is gray. <clears throat> All right. Um, just some other quick like hits around uh, the iPhone. iOS's 9.3 beta recently recently came out. Uh, I believe it was last week. We haven't been able to talk about it on this show, but they're doing some really big, significant changes in iOS. Uh, with this 9.3 beta right now, uh, there's some cool stuff where like you can dim, you can change the uh, color temperature of the screen late at night. Oh, yeah. They've talked about like you know uh, from 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 blue, which is more, bad for sleep, yeah, to yeah. yellow or yeah, something, to right? like kind of warmer tones. Can I do that now? Is this update? There's, I did an update yesterday. There's an actual. You can't do that now because it's only in the beta. There's actually a uh, like a jailbreak uh, app. I think it's called. Oh. It's forgive me guys if I'm wrong. It's either called Xflex. Or Z Flex, but it allows you to already do that. But Apple is <laughs> conveniently taking a feature they saw and just throwing <laughs> it in there, right? Yeah. But I could I could tell you right now, I'm the first guy that like right before I sleep, I like go to my iPad and I'll start reading like comics or I'll yeah. start reading articles and I'll try to say I want to go to sleep at eleven and I'll go to sleep at like one thirty or two. <laughs> yeah. And then you're like tired the next morning, it messes up, like you sometimes you get so amped up you can't sleep. So that is one of the issues that uh the new iOS 9.3 is hoping to address, which is which is which is really cool. It is cool, especially the light thing. I'm excited about that. Yeah, I, I mean, there's a bunch of there's a bunch of other things that it, that it's going to also do, uh, but but that's kind of like really the main one. There's um, what else is what else is there off the top of my head? Why why can't I remember off the top? Of my, I don't. Anyways. We will. I'll. I'll look. I'll look it up because, like, you know, there's a lot of stuff floating in my head. Oh, also, yeah, duh. Notes. You can have. Uh, you can pass code your notes now, so like you can put a security code on oh, there, that's so cool. so they won't be seen. That's cool. Also, new 3D touch actions now built into more Apple apps. So, for example, if you 3D touch on uh, your settings, it'll jump and instantly give you stuff like Bluetooth or Wi-Fi. Weather will show some of your cities. Just some more interoperability like that. So, um. I'm all about that. Health app will now show you. There's that activity app that's on your Apple Watch. Health app actually shows that right off the top, too, for your your uh, exercise, how much time you've been standing, blah, blah, blah. So uh, it, it's a lot of little tweaks here. The biggest thing also in nine iOS 9.3 for the iPad, they're targeting, they're at least advertising it for education, but multiple user profiles. Oh, nice. Like, yeah. 
I hope they don't limit that to education. They're they're like three or four years behind on this. They need to give us multiple users on an iPad. Totally. It's the dumbest thing ever. I know. (laughs) Come on, Apple. I would love to have a setting for my kids and one for me. I would agree with that. My kids getting on some weird stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, so we have that in iOS 9.3. Also, uh, Apple is investigating an iPhone battery percentage freezing bug. Supposedly, this happens uh, for people that are changing time zones. Your battery percentage ends up staying locked on a certain number. Then you don't really know what your true battery life is like. Ooh. And then you obviously that screws you up. So it's a freezing bug on the battery percentage. They're looking into it. They haven't um, made any official announcement, but they are looking into it. And another cool thing is uh, Apple recently released, you know, some minor general updates. iOS 9.2.1. This you would have been happy about this if you still had your old phone. Yeah, totally. According to reports, it makes it gives a speed boost in performance for Apple's iPhone 4S oh, and man. 5. Like I always felt like my 5 was like slower. Dude, once your phone this. was like a year old, and they put in the new operating system, it uh-huh. always made it more chuggy, it yeah, was yeah. laggier, it was crappier, and people were actually starting to sue, file lawsuits against Apple for this. <laughs> uh, but now it looks like they put some people on staff that are addressing this issue. That's good. That's so good. iOS 9.2.1, you know, my mama literally like a couple months ago just upgraded to an iPhone 6S from an iPhone 4, Okay. Nice. You know how legit that is? iPhone Super 4? Legit. Yeah. I still like her phone. They don't even it's... support 4 no. anymore, right? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Do they They don't even support the 6. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, so this will help you guys out, guys and gals that are still rocking uh, your retros, <laughs> your retro iPhone. Man, I wish I still had my one. Just just to have it. I, I have my one. Do you have your one? I should bring it in next year. I have, and it works. Oh, my God. That thing works. Be careful. I turned on, I had like a 3GS forever. That was like the and ceramic equal. It was off for a long yeah. time, and I turned it on, and then it, the battery like expanded and exploded inside. Are you dead serious? Yeah. I hadn't, it, I, it was off for like a few months. Yeah, I have my original one. It works. I even uh, synced it up to my iTunes. Nice. So <laughs> it's, it's cool. It's cool. I love the fact that it it's like, it just reminds you of, I remember that first iPhone. That, that was a game changer, man. Life, life that changing. was a game changer. Yeah. All right, uh, just some quick news around the Apple Watch. Apple is going to start selling their Hermes branded Apple Watch collection online starting Friday. This is for all you high-end cats who, uh, you know, really love your special leather designer Apple Watch style. Oh, uh, starting, I think they're starting around uh, like $1,100. Wow. <laughs> Yeah, especially with rumblings that like the new Apple Watch is going to be announced in the next like couple months. Eleven hundred bucks. There you go. Those are pretty, those are pretty dope, though. <laughs> pretty dope. Also, according to a report from TechCrunch, uh, their ba- one of the reporters based on his supply chain checks believes that the Apple Watch will not appear at the. Uh, people are guessing that we're going to start seeing something new around the Apple Watch in March 2016. I've been a staunch, you know, supporter of the saying that. I, I really feel like this Apple Watch is going to be like a one year and a half, two year life cycle. It should be. Mm-hmm. Like Apple should just all of a sudden just jump into it. It's a watch. It doesn't even really do that much. It's not like you, they change it up and it's going to all of a sudden people are going to start buying them in droves. The price is what is going to make people buy them in droves. They could even sell the Apple Watch for $100 off during this Black Friday holiday season. It's crazy. Like, really? You so, know? So they're going to, you think it's going to be an hour or a year and a half uh, sequence? So I think so. I don't March th- or April. I think well, we'll we might although we might hear about them. I think we're gonna hear about them more like April May, and then they might come out. They might release. I don't think they need to be on a one year, uh, one year life cycle. Yeah, that it that that would really turn off more people. People are kind of used to the. In reality, the iPhone is more on a two year life cycle, right? Depending yes. on when your contract is. Well, that's, although they, they come out every that. year, right? <laughs> that's true. Get ready for the iPhone Seven, homie. Get ready for it. You're not even on a one year. You won't even be on no, a one year contract anymore. I got this success, man, with the you know my my contract. I'll just hang on to as long as I can until yeah. it dies. You know, I think I get a lot of people mad when we talk about the Apple Watch. I'm telling, I don't unless you like to be annoyed by notifications all the time. I don't think it's that great. Uh, I don't need it to, for fitness. See Casey on Periscope was like, the Apple Watch is amazing. People are like, the Apple Watch is lame. Uh, I think it's a very polarizing product. It is. Because Apple fans, diehard fans, like they're going to love it no matter what. 
Yeah. And then someone who's like, let me take a step back. How much do I actually use this? How much is it actually worth? Wait, do I even need any smartwatch, anything? They're all going to be like, no. Yeah. Like, <laughs> this bad boy, I've said it's going up on eBay. Don't worry. This thing's going up on eBay this week. So. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. I, Especially with a new one coming out, even though the new one won't do anything different, I'm like, I should probably just put mine on eBay right now. <laughs> it's probably a good idea. All right. Um, And then, you know, like I said, TechCrunch says we probably won't see it. That's based on his assumptions. There were rumors that Quanta, the manufacturer of the first-gen Apple Watch, was going to start a trial production of the Apple Watch 2 by the end of this month. Uh, According to TechCrunch, that isn't happening, but we know the rumors the next Apple Watch could potentially have a FaceTime camera, could potentially be a thinner form factor. We'll see. Uh, I, I think that they, they've got to at least make these bands, this band strap that they made with it, still compatible. Oh, yeah. People sure. will be pissed if they don't. <laughs> yeah. Totally. Like, peop- heads will roll. Because people spend some good money on that. But, yeah, I think a camera on the front will be a big selling point for the new one. I mean, that's probably what they will, you know, focus on when they're trying to sell it. If there's one feature that would make it cool, would be to have FaceTime camera on it. Yeah. And I'm not saying that it would make me buy one and be overwhelmed with it because I'm not. I'm completely underwhelmed with the Apple Watch. It's just how I feel, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I, I switched back to my regular watch during the entire break, and I didn't miss it at all. Dude, I got like I got a new watch too, bro. Simple. Dude. S- stupid watch. Dude, the only <laughs> thing I like about the Apple Watch is the fact that they're the new feature they added where you can pull favorite pictures, and I can oh, see photos. Cool. Yeah. So, yeah, hey, nice. here, here's the aluminum stainless steel watch for X amount of <laughs> for dollars picture, for so you photos. can look at a photo with the time on it. Like, that's really my favorite feature of the Apple Watch. How pathetic that is, is that? Funny. That, that is, is funny. Okay, um, let's, you know what, I say let's kind of check out the phone calls we have. We had a little sure. more, but, you know, we like to keep our show around half an hour. So, uh, we, again, encourage you guys, if you want to be a part of the show, 1-800-616-2638 is the number to call. <clears throat> leave your name, number, and message. Um, let's just take our first call. All right, here we go. Hey, Brian and Beecham. Um, this is Brian from New Orleans. I was calling to get your opinion on the complications for the Apple Watch. You know, one thing that I still have not seen is uh, any types of sports updates, which I think that would be awesome if they had it. Brian, I know you're a big Warriors fan, so I can imagine you know you'd like to see that as well. Um, so I, I wanted to know if y'all had any insight into when we might get more complications. There's literally just like one that I've seen as I translate. So hoping more are coming soon to hopefully make the Apple Watch more useful. Thanks. So more complications on the I- Apple Watch. This is not, he's not saying make the Apple Watch more complicated. <laughs> complications yeah. with watches are kind of those little, uh, when you have some of those like diver watches that have like, uh, you know, the depth that you're at, different Different like pieces of information. Apple has brought new faces with more complications to give you more information, like weather, you know, things of that nature, altitude, things of that nature. Uh, I think that it's indicative of the fact that Apple was hoping that developers would flock to the Apple Watch. People aren't buying enough of the Apple Watch, and we really haven't. Have you seen an amazing killer app no, for the Apple Watch yet? I have not. No. No, neither have I. I barely see people wearing Apple Watches. There, no one says. <laughs> This is the greatest app on the Apple Watch. They don't. There's not a killer app on the Apple Watch. Just there's some games that there's Instagram, right? <laughs> <laughs> you can watch Vine videos on your Apple Watch. Oh, get ready, get ready, world. Um, no, there, there's no killer app, and I think that's why we haven't seen stuff like that. There is a sports. There's the ESPN app, and I got it, but then it took so long to load, and then they. They didn't show all the scores that I wanted. It was just like a few. I was like, forget it. You know, there, there's too much stuff going on there. I wish, I think sports scores would be a killer complication, uh, but no one's really built one into a face. I'm sure that'll happen in the future. But uh, it to me, it's more indicative of developers not jumping on board with the Apple Watch as much as uh, Apple hoped they would. Well, can you ask Siri on your Apple Watch? what the? Because sc- I always ask Siri what the score of a game is. I could if my can Apple Watch was charged. <laughs> <laughs> See? See? <laughs> You know, you know how many times I've come on the show. You're like, your yeah, Apple Watch I never see it on. It's never on. I've never seen it. On. It's fat. It's a fashion. It's fashion right now. I'm beginning to think it's just not even a working watch. It's just it's, it is it. It is it. And that's why I, this whole break, I went back to my cool bling bling watch, and someone's like, "Oh, that's a dope watch." I'm like, "Yeah, it is a dope watch." It's cool. It tells the time. 
<laughs> I don't even use my watch for time. I pull out my phone all the time. I know. Do you do that? I do. I do use my watch for for time. But I, you know, you, if you want to know like the real time, you look at your watch. That's, that's how I feel too. That's how I feel. <laughs> all right, next call. All right, here we go. Hey guys, it's Colin from British Columbia, Canada, and uh, I was wondering if you guys think that Apple will ever bring back the 17-inch MacBook Pro. I don't know. Like, I think it would be cool if they brought it back for power users. Maybe it could have some form factor, maybe even a 4K Retina display. That would sound like the perfect mobile editing machine for someone or any professional who is looking for a a true desktop replacement who really wants the power of the 27-inch iMac with a great screen and to view full 4K videos in their native resolution, but also be portable and can take their workflow any way they go. Okay, first of all, this question on the phone is about bringing back the 17-inch MacBook Pro, which I, which I, this is this guy is a hardcore guy. I also do want to. Again, remember, remind our friends that are watching on Periscope Live, like, we can't hear emoji poo-poo. Uh, like, this is an audio podcast, so that's why you kind of got to – we offer this as a service to you all to be a part of the show. But when we have voicemails and voice calls, this is for our listening audience. So subscribe to the podcast. Help us out. But that's how you can hear everything. All right, back to the topic of the MacBook 17-inch MacBook Pro. An amazing machine. I remember when I first saw it. Amazing for pros, but not enough people bought it. And you, I think they could do an amazing job with it right now. Everything you said, a retina display, faster processor, desktop class processing. But the numbers bo- bared out that people weren't buying enough of them. I used to work at an Apple retail store when the 17-inch was out. And when at that time, arguably, it was at its highest power, its peak. And I would say probably for every... We sold one 17-inch probably for every, tw- man, even 12 to 15 laptops we sold. When I hear 17-inch, it just sounds so big. Like, just sounds cumbersome. You know what I'm saying? It, it's it's large. It's, it's big. And now these days, right, you can just dock your laptop into a monitor. Yeah. And I get it. You want more. But look, the 15-inch model has kind of been tried and true now. People are still comfortable enough on the road editing. They would like a larger screen, but you haven't seen – this huge upswell of where's the 17. I think if you did, Apple would do it again, but just from the finance, from the dollar standpoint, it doesn't make sense. I thought it was an amazing machine though, but um, I, I doubt they bring it back. Uh, I don't want to say never say never, but pretty much not. I, 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 it would be hard for me to see it happen. Yeah. I feel like the IMAX are the replacement sort of, you know, at They're least not laptops, but, but then again, they made the iPad pro, <laughs> which I love dearly. And I, I'm for the record, I'm not saying it's worth it, but I read a whole bunch of digital comics and a whole bunch watch a whole bunch of movies when I'm on the road, and it's amazing for that. I don't use the smart board keyboard case; it sucks. I don't use the pen. I do once in a while just for fun with my nieces and nephews, but <laughs> I think most people that also bought this product are like, yeah, it's just a bigger iPad. That's why I bought it. Yeah, I, creatives there still is not a de facto killer app for the iPad Pro. Software, hardware, that app used to be Apple Strength. Now it's just like cool hardware, but where's the software that really makes it pop? Apple Watch, iPad Pro. You starting to see a trend here, everybody? Yeah. <laughs> but I still, I still love most of my Apple products. All right, next call. Yeah, this is Brian calling from California, and I'm commenting on the Lightning headphones. Yeah, I, I, I the thing I don't like about it is that. Apple releases that it kind of takes away your choices of being able to use other headphones. No more Beats, no more Bulls. So you're going to be stuck buying their product or products like that in order to use headphones with the iPhone. So, you know, I like innovation, but not at the cost of taking away my right to choose. I, I... The man likes the right to choose, Beecham. Yeah, I agree what, with what, him. What, what do you think about this? I agree with him. I mean, you know... We're we're not, we're going to be very limited in what we could do. We're going to have to spend some money, and that's never a good thing. I guarantee you, everyone will whatever this, in you know with with this headphone situation, whatever happens, everyone will lose that adapter at least once. Yes, <laughs> I mean they moved it to the bottom. That was bad enough. When they moved it to the bottom, I was like, what? 
I got to have my my iPhone sideways everywhere. I did but, uh, hate that initially, but because I was so used to it at the top, but when you put your phone in your pocket, I mean, that makes sense. That's the that's but the I would place always where put my helps. phone in my pocket upside down, you know. Well, it never didn't really affect me that much. Apple say is telling you, Stephen, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> Well, they're doing it wrong because I turn my phone sideways at the gym, and then the app doesn't even turn sideways. Oh like, they yeah, don't even, you know it's it's, it's, it's silly. So so, they I've talked about it a hundred times, I'm sure. I think I just I get it. Yeah, whatever. We want a single interface. Like, let me use my phone sideways. It's so big now. I know. You know what I mean? Huge. Just let me. Oh, sorry. The iPhone 6s home screen can only be used sideways if you buy the Plus. My SoundCloud Screw app that. turns sideways. Every other one of my, every other app I have turns sideways. Oh well, first world problems. Dude, <laughs> headphones. <laughs> headphones. <laughs> headphones. First world problems, man. I want the wireless ones. <clears throat> All right, everybody. That's gonna do it for this week's show. We are back. On a normal schedule, we did this a little earlier, but we'll be back to our basically our Friday rotation yeah. with the Apple White Extra Crunchy. Steven Beecham, say goodbye to everybody. Goodbye, everyone. Thanks for listening. All right, we'll catch you all next week. Peace.